بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك هو تعالى كما ورد في سورة آل عمران يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا بنت مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين I just wanted to speak to you about how to see our own shortcomings. I remember almost eight to 10 years ago, I was exposed to this work, first of all by Imam Ghazali, then by Ibn Qudama, Ibn Jawzi, other scholars also compiled this. And it really helped me, the advice, the four point agenda, the four advice which they have, which I want to share with you. It really helped me, not only in my career, but even as an individual, because it helped me to see my flaws, see my shortcomings, because we are blindsided when it comes to looking at our own mistakes, looking at our own flaws. We are very quick in looking at the flaws of others. So his advice is how you can find out your own shortcomings. So I think that just like it helped me and it is helping me until today, I hope that inshallah, we all can find this beneficial inshallah ta'ala. Because um, you have to keep this in mind that all of us, we have some positive traits in our character and personality and some negative traits. We all have some gems and jewels and pearls within our characteristic. And at the same time, we might have some, some snake or scorpions within our character. And a person who is intelligent will able to recognize those flaws and shortcomings in his character, in her character, and they will eventually recognize that and try to fix that. And if the person is not intelligent, if the person is not smart, then eventually he will be busy himself, himself or herself and just keep looking at the flaws of the world but he will, going to be, he will going to become blind or she will going to become blind when it comes to his or her own mistake. So that's why this advice is very powerful. Just remember these four things inshallah. And obviously when I'm talking I will be speaking from an Imam perspective but you whether you are working in school, in college, wherever you are, try to apply these four things in order to have a journey towards self-development. So, he starts by saying, He says, know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good for someone, when Allah wants to give good khair to someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose him to his or her own flaws. So he starts by that. Because when Allah wants good for you, you will recognize that there are mistakes, there are shortcomings, there are flaws within my own character and I need to fix that. And then he says, he who have a deep insight, he who have a deep reflection ability, his defects, his shortcomings or her shortcomings are not concealed or hidden from him or her. And then he says, when defects are known, then only you can fix it. In any stage of problem solving, the very first stage is to recognize there is a one. So he says the first stage to solve your problem that you have this shortcoming is to recognize that you have an issue with your character or your personality. So he says this that if we do these four things, inshallah, we'll be able to help ourselves in finding short shortcomings and flaws within our character and personalities. By the way, we all know now we are living in a Western civilization, 21st century, how much, how much big corporations spend to get customer feedback. There's an entire field and science for that, getting customer feedback, surveys, how to basically make sure to get the criticism of the customer on our product, the more criticism we get on our product so that we can improve next time. Same thing happened with our self-development journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are four things we can do and all of us can do, whether you are a nine year old boy or a 80 year old or brother or sister, we all can do this. Let's start. First thing, he says, He says, all of us should get a mentor in our life, a mentor who is wise, a mentor who is knowledgeable, a mentor who can not only teach us, but he can sit with us and he can listen to us and he can tell that, okay, Asif, you are struggling with arrogance here. You are struggling with jealousy here. And we need to listen to the mentor then, just like a patient listen to a doctor's advice. Because your mentor will be quick to gauge or judge based on his wisdom about the guidelines 
to your self-development journey, about the feedback which you need to hear, or even if you don't need to hear, but you need that, you need that advice. There are many benefits of having mentors, by the way, even in your professional life, in your work. And obviously, most importantly, the religion. Your mentor will help you in the process of your self-development. Your mentor will even help you to give, give you proper knowledge. Your mentor will help you sometimes to basically listen to your ideas and give you the feasibility report. Is it something what you want to do with your life? Is something real or not? Um, even your mentors can help you to build connections. But most importantly, what he's saying here, Imam Ghazali is saying here, that your mentor will going to fix your character issues. If you are having some issues of heart, negative characteristics in your heart, he will going to fix that. Obviously, finding a mentor, a trustworthy, sincere, wise, knowledgeable mentor is a difficult task, isn't it? Because <laughs> we are talking about these scholars who said this, like, let's take the example, Imam Ghazali came in 5th century after Rasulullah So it's 450, his date of birth, 505 Hijri, he passed away, Rahimahullah. He said this, and he accepted that to find a real, sincere, wise mentor is difficult. And we are talking about 1,000 years back. <laughs> so 1,000 years up front, it will be difficult to find such a mentor. But at the same time, when there is no water, you can do tayammum. So you need to look around your community, who is balanced in his life, who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have basic knowledge of Islam, but at the same time, he have wisdom also along with the knowledge of Islam, because there are two different things as recognized by the Quran and Hadith. And eventually you can talk to him. And at the same time, we don't have a faith like Catholicism, where you have to confess of your sins like to the pastor. You have to make sure that the door of abuse is never open. But having mentor for your self-development is extremely, extremely necessary. I cannot tell you how much benefit I got when I started talking to my mentors for my self-development. The, the fact that I'm giving this khutbah, the fact that whatever classes I'm teaching after the father of Allah is actually because my mentors advised me to go in a certain direction. And I request all of you from the beginning, from the childhood, develop this habit to your kids that you start having mentors and talk to them. Second, second point after mentorship. He says, Ayatulba Sadiqan Sadukan Basiran. He says, apart from talking to your mentors about your self-development, one of the other ways of finding your shortcomings is to ask your sincere friend, who is wise and sincere friend in the community, to tell you your mistakes. Not everyone, not every friend, only sincere friend. And not only the sincere who is pretending to be sincere, because there are people who are jealous with you but they will pretend to be sincere, but real sincere friend. And it requires some effort to find out those friends. But once you find out those friends, then ask those friends, can you tell me my mistakes, my shortcomings when I interact with people? Did you feel too much about me, my, I? So ask those friends. And by the way, this is the habit of Sahaba. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, he used to ask other Sahaba like Salman al-Farsi radiallahu an. And there are multiple narrations mentioned but one, one time he asked Salman al-Farsi, can you tell me my flaws? Am I the Khalifa or a king? Am I acting like a Khalifa right now, Salman? Or am I an oppressive king? And Salman al-Farsi said that, see, we know the process. If you are taking money of people unjustly, then you are a king. And if you are trying to be just as much as you can, then you are a Khalifa. So he was upfront. That please tell me my mistakes, please tell me my flaws, please tell me my shortcomings. Umar reported to have said, Rahimallahu rajulan ahda ilayya ayubi. May Allah have mercy on that person who tell me my shortcomings. This is a process all of you have to go through. Some people, they just, from the childhood, adulthood, old age, they have the issue of arrogance, they have the issue of anger, and they're never able to fix it. Because they've never gone through this process of asking people, what are the mistakes I have and how can I improve? Because many times your ego filters out information. Your arrogance filters out the information. So it's extremely important to ask your sincere friend to go through this process. By the way, it's difficult today to ask sincere friends to criticize on you. First of all, we are not intelligent enough to ask our friends to criticize on us. That's, that's one thing. We are not smart enough like Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. And second, it's really hard to find sincere friends. Because many a times what you find are jealous friends and uh, they always want to see your demise. <laughs>
And I'm not saying this, that this is happening today, even back in the days. People will come in the form that they are sincere, they are giving nasiha, but sometimes they are jealous with you. Didn't we see Surah Araf, where Iblis said to Adam, Iblis was jealous, right, with Adam? He says, Inni lakuma laminan nasihin minan nasiha. No, 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 I'm giving nasiha to you, I'm giving sincere advice to you. But we know he was jealous, he was not giving sincere advice. So when a person says, I'm giving sincere advice, not necessarily you have to take him on his words. You have to see how, what kind of personal relationship you have. And that's why we are being told to ask this dua. They're always asked to have a sincere friends in your life. See, Rasulullah Sallallahu did not only tell us the dua of how to use restroom, how to come out of restroom, how to pray in the salah, even for sincere friends. He used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min khalilin makirin. Oh Allah, I seek your refuge. I seek your protection from having hypocrite friend from having two-faced friend. He's always looking at my sins. I don't want that. If Rasulullah Sallallahu is so skeptical about sincere friends, then we are more deserving for this dua than anyone else. Third, third. So first is have mentors, ask your mentor, tell you your shortcomings. Second, have sincere friends in your life. Third, أَن يَسْتَفِيدَ مَعَرْفَةُ عِيُوبِ نَفْسِهِ مِنْ أَلْسِنَةِ أَعْدَائِهِ Learn from your enemies. This is difficult. Sometimes your sweet-tongued friend won't be able to tell you the shortcomings you have, but your enemy, whether in your work, in your school, the troublemaker friend or troublemaker family uh, member, troublemaker relative, will going to tell you, out of his animosity, out of her animosity, the problem in your personality, the problem in your character. Even though it will feel bad because of destructive criticism, but learn that, that there is one issue which I need to fix in my personality. This is shortcoming, even though it's coming from your enemy. Because their eyes, the eyes of a critics are too quick to diagnose the shortcomings within us. And fourth, last, because I know it's 115 already. And you call it nas. Mingle with people to see your faults. If you're, you already have a mentor, you already have some sincere friends who are telling you shortcomings in your personality and character and you are already keep looking at the critics, what they are saying. But at the same time, have this. Go and mingle with the people in your family, in your community, in your work. See how different people with negative characteristics are reacting. Oh, that brother, he's clearly struggling with arrogance. Wait a minute. I have the same characteristic in me. I should fix that. That sister, she's clearly strugg struggling from jealousy. Wait a minute. I do, see, I do the same thing. Just by observing people, be proactive. And we all can do this. And the moment you are going to take out the, fix your character and do the self-development, you will see it's like an onion. When you peel the onion, one layer will come and you will see that other layer is attached to the onion. And there is no goal for this character because it's a mean. You can never say that I have achieved the character of Rasulullah sallallahu because that was the Prophet sallallahu We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us uh, the understanding uh, of all this, what, what was being said, and give us the ability to analyze our shortcomings and to fix it. Just quickly, even though this advice of having mentor and friends who can tell you about your shortcomings is for everyone, but it's really important if you are doing any Islamic work, Islamic activism, activism running a masjid, studying Islam, khatib, running a relief organization, Islamic teacher, running a school, Islamic school, volunteer Islamic work, then you should definitely have a mentor. Then you should definitely have people surround you, surrounding you who can tell you this is right and this is wrong. Because many times when you are doing something Islamic related, you will say I'm perfect. And your ego will going to filter out every criticism. That's a recipe to disaster. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep shaitan away from us and to give us the ability to accept our flaws and mistakes so we can improve that inshallah Allahumma ansari al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma gzul man khazala deena muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna maahum Allahumma la taj'alna dhamman illa ghafarta wa lhamman illa farrajta wa ladaynan illa qadayta wa lhajata min hawaij dunya wa al-akhira illa qadaytaha ya arhamar rahimin wa la maridan illa shafayta wa la maytan illa rahimta wa la dalan illa hadayta ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma Bye.